expectations. Years ago, um, I was facilitating an addiction recovery program with my wife. I would take the ones who were, had the addictions and my wife would take the ones who were the codependents, which is just a severe an addiction. And um, we noticed uh, an interesting pattern. The, um, the husband and wife, using this as an example, the husband, let's just say he's got the addiction, the wife is the codependent. They would drive to the meeting, but they wouldn't talk. They would go to their meetings and they would engage in their meetings. Then they get back in their car and they drive home and they wouldn't talk. And during the week, they wouldn't talk. Of course, she's angry at him because of his addiction and her happiness is contingent upon him doing what she perceives he should do, her immaculate perception, right? So she's very biased, she's very problem focused. So she's playing the role of the victim and he feels that he's playing the role of the victim. So when she feels helpless and hopeless, she's actually persecuting him because she's not talking to him or she's nagging him or playing a detective. So I'm hoping you're getting the picture here. In this scenario with the, the addict and the codependent of the addict, there was a lack of communication. So my wife and I got together and we decided we'd create a curriculum for the two to communicate with each other. During the building of this curriculum, I was in the foyer, uh, we were kind of uh, between meetings, and I had one of the um, codependents walk up to me and start asking me some questions. She was a little frustrated with her husband. And what I explained to her is what came out here, and then I ended up writing it on the board. I talked about the fact that when we set expectations for other people, we set ourselves up for failure because the expectation is based upon our own narrative, right? It's our own immaculate perception. So as you look at this with me, I have an expectation A and an expectation B. I know that's not really fancy, but I've never come up with anything different in almost 10 years. Expectation A is like a credit report. It's the way it's always been. It's the way you've acted in the past. Expectation B is how I want you to act in the future. So it's my immaculate perception. Um, it's premeditated resentment. In other words, because I have an expectation of you to act this way, I know you're not going to do it. I mean, that's just reality. So I'm premeditating how I'm gonna resent you because you don't do what I think you should do. And it's self-induced frustration. Let me conclude this with a story. Um, some years ago, um, I was at my office, it was a weekend, and my sister called me. And my sister calls me, and this is what she says. Um, I'm going to kill your mother. And I thought, okay, how come she's my mother today? And she said, well, because she's doing this, this, and this, and this. Now, let me take you to the model. That's history. This is what she's always done. So I asked her, has she ever done this before? Yeah. Um, how long has she been doing this? Forever. I said, all right. So does she do it just to you or does she do it to other people? No, she does it to everyone. So let me get it right. Mom's always engaged in this behavior. Sorry, my mom has always engaged in this behavior, right? And she was engaging this behavior yesterday. Yep, she did it last week. Yep, last month. Yep, last year. Yep, okay, got it. How many years has she been doing it again? Well, at least 40, that's how old I am. I said, all right, got it. And tonight when you went to bed, that's what your mom was doing. Yes, that's correct. So this morning when you woke up, you decided that now your perceptions changed. You're gonna expect mom to change because you now think she should be different. Did I get that right? And she goes, well, when you put it that way, it seems kind of silly, isn't it? I said, well, yeah, that's what it seems like to me. When you put an expectation on someone else's behavior, that you're gonna hinge your happiness, joy, and well-being on, that's codependent. It's not their problem, it's your problem because you're the one putting the expectation. Expectation A is just what happens. You accept what has been in the past, that's just the way it is. Expectation B is what's getting you frazzled and getting you frustrated. Premedicated resentment, or pre premeditated resentment. You're getting angry and you're planning to get angry because that's how you're gonna drug yourself. Because when you're not connecting, because you're in resistance, not acceptance, it hurts. You know how to medicate now because your subconscious is gonna hijack you. Hiccup's gonna get thrown off. Toothless is gonna run the show. That's a hijack. 
and you're not doing it out of judgment because there's no judgment here. You just know that's how you're going to get your drugs. So you have to get angry. You have to play helpless, hopeless. You have to play the role of the victim. And then you have to persecute or you have to play the martyr so you can medicate. And this pattern repeats itself over and over and over again. I'm giving you a model of what it looks like. And if you feel kind of silly or you see that as kind of silly, then you use the process that we've laid out for you in the protocol. Start learning to deliberately practice. Create the foxhole that makes the decisions for you. Learn what it means to go into acceptance. So as a bonus, I'm just going to read that definition. What does it mean to be in acceptance? I've used that term a lot. Acceptance is the ability to channel energy around or through the body and mind instead of collecting it like a reservoir. You're collecting negative energy. You're putting an expectation on what someone else should be doing according to your immaculate perception. And immaculate perception is a bias. So by definition, again, immaculate perception is one's belief bias based on experiential blindness. You're seeing how it should be until you learn to question your own assumptions. Move into that space of neutral. Quit living in yesterday. Quit projecting a tomorrow. You're going to be frustrated and you're going to keep medicating. Now's the time to break that streak a little bit at a time, incrementally improving 1% per day by creating your foxhole, habit stacking where you're going, using your deliberate statements or your, your implementation statements. That's what's so critical. Find out who you are. Who are you really? What's your identity? What's your authentic self? And move from there. Thanks. Thanks.